Meu nome é Bárbara Souza, eu sou a primeira mulher brasileira a fazer a posição de gerente de operações do Parque das Conchas, que é uma plataforma de exploração e extração de petróleo. Eu ocupo uma posição de liderança extremamente importante para o Shell Brasil. Se eu puder olhar para trás e ver que eu abri espaço para pessoas que são diferentes, eu cumpri o meu papel. Petrobras acredita em toda a tecnologia que aponte para um futuro melhor. Robôs que chegam em lugares impossíveis, a Petrobras tem. Supercomputadores e inteligência artificial com respostas instantâneas, também usamos. Realidade virtual para aumentar a eficiência, tudo isso está na Petrobras. Porque assim, com tanta inovação, seremos ainda melhores para você. Meu nome é Bárbara Souza, eu sou a primeira mulher brasileira a fazer a posição de gerente de operações do Parque das Conchas, que é uma plataforma de exploração e extração de petróleo. Eu ocupo uma posição de liderança extremamente importante para o Shell Brasil. Se eu puder olhar para trás e ver que eu abri espaço para pessoas que são diferentes, eu cumpri o meu papel. Robôs que chegam em lugares impossíveis, a Petrobras tem. Supercomputadores e inteligência artificial com respostas instantâneas, também usamos. Realidade virtual para aumentar a eficiência, tudo isso está na Petrobras. Porque assim, com tanta inovação, seremos ainda melhores para você.
Meu nome é Bárbara Souza, eu sou a primeira mulher brasileira a fazer a aquisição de gerente de operações do Parque das Conchas, que é uma plataforma de exploração e extração de petróleo. Eu ocupo uma posição de liderança extremamente importante para o Shell Brasil. Se eu puder olhar para trás e ver que eu abri espaço para pessoas que são diferentes, eu cumpri o meu papel. Senhoras e senhores, bem-vindos ao keynote speaker dessa, dessa, desse horário de meio-dia do 17º Congresso Internacional da Sociedade Brasileira de Geofísica. Esse congresso é um dos mais importantes eventos científicos, talvez o mais importante do Hemisfério Sul, e nós temos a honra de contar agora com o Dr. Luiz Aragão, do INPE. Ele vai falar sobre a importância do INPE na área de sensoriamento remoto para o nosso país. O pesquisador Luiz Aragão é o chefe da Divisão de Observação da Terra e Geoinformática do Instituto Nacional de Pesquisas Espaciais. Possui 25 anos de experiência na produção de informações científicas sobre os impactos das mudanças ambientais e climáticas no sistema terrestre. Atua na área de inovação tecnológica, desenvolvendo e aprimorando metodologias para qualificação e quantificação de emissões e remoções de carbono pelas florestas, utilizando dados de satélite. Atualmente é o presidente do Comitê Científico do Programa de Grande Escala Biosfera Atmosfera na Amazônia. Aragão contribuiu com mais de 200 artigos científicos, incluindo estudos publicados em periódicos como Science e Nature. Eu gostaria de ter a honra de convidar a professora a doutora Roberta Vidotti, atual presidente da Sociedade Brasileira de Geofísica, para compor a mesa e fazer é, o fechamento do, da apresentação. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. We are going to have the lecture of uh, Dr. Luiz Aragão from National Institute of uh, Science Research. Uh, sorry, spatial research. Uh, please, Dr. Dr. Luiz Aragão, be very welcome to Sociedade Brasileira de Geofísica. We are very glad with your presence here. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberta. Thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure to be in this plenary section uh, in, the, in this Congress, which is one of the most uh, important, uh, at least the, the biggest one in, in Brazil and, and Latin America, and uh, to also have the opportunity to share Uh, our experience at INP on the remote sensing side, which we are acting uh, for more than 60 years, and I think will be uh, a, a great experience to, to share all this uh, knowledge that we have built uh, throughout all, all these years. So I, I'm sharing uh, my screen here. Uh, I hope Uh, you can see it. Okay, so my my talk today to open uh, the the session uh, is to talk a little bit about the critical role of INPE for the Brazilian uh, remote sensing activities, and also uh, for the development of of our, our country, uh, because as uh, all of you know, uh, Brazil has an area of more than 8 million square kilometers and uh, remote sensing is actually a necessary tool for us uh, to manage our territory. So my name is Luiz Aragão. Uh, I'm the Deputy General Coordinator of Earth Science uh, at INPE and also the head of, of the Earth Observation and Geoinformatic, uh, Geoinformatics Division. So to start with the, the talk, I'm trying just to go forward.
the idea then is to uh, give a brief overview of uh, how IMP was created and where we are going, and then uh, show some of the, the main uh, programs that we have uh, to monitor uh, our, our country and few uh, developments that uh, we, are, we are pursuing to evolve uh, with the, the technologies that exist nowadays in terms of a remote sensing. So uh, in relation to, to the, the history of, of INPI, INPI is uh, acting in the field of science and technology for more than 60 years. So INPI emerged in the early 60s, uh, just very aligned with all the, all the actions in the United States and, and uh, the Soviet Union during during the the special race uh when the the soviets had launched uh sputnik the first uh satellite and then uh and then uh us also followed these steps and people were very excited with all these uh new developments and in brazil we had uh two uh brilliant uh students uh, Fernando de Mendonça and, and, and Julio Coutinho. And uh, these guys, they have developed and built a tracking station and were able really to capture uh, the signals of these two satellites. And then, uh, in, 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 still in the 60s, uh, the president, uh, Jânio Quadros, has then signed a decree that would create the first uh, organization that that became INPI later, which was this uh, this group of the National Commission of Space Activities, and from this INPI was then uh, created and was led by by Dr. Uh, Mendonça uh, uh, in the beginning with this this brilliant view of the of the future of space science uh, globally so uh to say a little bit about the about the the activities uh that we do in terms of remote sensing uh i have a, a, a chronology here because uh, the remote sensing at impi was created for deliver applied environmental science using satellites. So in, in 1966, uh, we had uh, this project uh, MESA, uh, which was related to, to, to uh, meteorological activities based on satellite data. So this was the first, uh, the first uh, project at INPI related to, to the Earth observation uh, fields. Then in 69, the remote sensing project was put in place, and uh, this was specifically designed for, for Brazilian to build their, uh, uh, its capacity to analyze uh, satellite images from Earth observation satellites and monitor uh, their agriculture, their, their whole territory, and, and do uh, and be able to uh, provide uh, the, the, the management of, of, uh, of uh, its uh, territory and its environment. And uh, for this project, INPI uh, needed to train um, a lot of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of professionals in, in this uh, field. So it was a collaboration with NASA and uh, by uh, this collaboration, we were able then to build this first uh, cohort of professionals that had the expertise uh, to analyze uh, the satellite images. And uh, some of them are still at INPI nowadays, which is a, a, a real honor to, to learn all this history uh, and the, the, all the process of building a, a complete new field uh, in the country 
with this very high level, uh, this, this very, very state of art technology when we talk about remote sensing in the, in the 60s, 70s. So in the 70s, then with people already prepared to, to, to analyze this data, uh, Brazil was the third country in the world to receive Landsat data. So uh, uh, the first country was, uh, of course, the uh, United States that built the Landsat program, Canada, and then Brazil. Brazil had then uh, all the uh, built the infrastructure to, to receive uh, the Landsat data because uh, uh, in the past, uh, these satellites didn't have a, re a data recorder flying on them. So you need to have the, the, the ground stations to download the data. And then Brazil was uh, uh, this very key partner of, uh, of uh, the Landsat program because uh, then US were able to record and, and get access to, to the Landsat data in the Southern, and southern Hemisphere. Uh, EMP started uh, in 72 with a master in remote sensing. And then we have read for more than a thousand uh, master uh, students, uh, which nowadays are uh, delivering high level science in uh, all the Brazilian territory working in academy and also in the, in the private sector but not only in Brazil, but also in other countries in the world. We have people in the US, in the UK, in France. So uh, I think this was uh, uh, probably the, the, the greatest contribution of INPE to the field is really to build the capacity of people to, to, to access, to analyze and to transform this data into uh, information that can be used by the society for uh, different purposes. Uh, in 78, uh, we start with the Brazilian Symposium of Remote Sensing because uh, uh, it's very important to form people to, to build this capacity, but it's also very important to uh, have the connectivity between these people to uh, discuss the field, discuss the science, and, and the Brazilian Symposium was a platform uh, to do it. And in 78, then, uh, was the first symposium, uh, and in 2022 would be the 21st, but because of the pandemics, we decided to do it in, in, in 2023 and probably 2022, we are going to have an online uh, event. So everybody is, uh, is, uh, can, 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 can join us and uh, also uh, have uh, a little bit of the taste of this uh, community that grows uh, all the all the time in Brazil, and we also have a lot of uh, international participants. So, with all these uh, uh, human resource and and the technology in place, uh, in the eighties, Brazil start then to 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 their monitoring programs to to look at the uh, at fires and at deforestation. That I will speak a bit more later. And in the 90s, the end of the 90s, uh, Brazil start with the doctorate uh, course in remote sensing, and we have uh, around uh, 200 doctors already formed in Brazil uh, acting in, in this field. So we had this application, uh, 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 remote sensing was very focused on the application, but INP also had the engineering uh, group. And this group, uh, has already produced several uh, satellites and instruments that support the applications and give this autonomy to the country to have their own instruments to uh, be able to monitor its territory. And uh, Brazil started producing satellites in, in 1993 with, with the, the satellites for data collection. So it's not a satellite that produces images, but actually it collects uh, information from ground stations 
like a meteorological ground station or, or, or hydrological ground station so that uh, uh, emits the radio signal and then the, the, the satellite can collect it and deliver it to, to, uh, to, uh, to, to the user. Uh, in 1999, uh, Brazil started then building uh, Earth observation satellites. These satellites had uh, optical cameras that could then look at the surface and we can do several applications based on this data. Uh, this was a partnership between Brazil and, Ch and China and uh, was very uh, productive. So Brazil uh, was able to, to launch, uh, to produce successfully uh, six uh, satellites. We have uh, now two of these satellites flying. Uh, Cibers 4 and Cibers 4A, they are operational. And uh, because of this uh, capacity building and, and uh, the learning of our engineering uh, engineers, in 2021, we, we successfully launched uh, Amazon, Amazonia 1, that is a, a, a satellite completely built in Brazil. There are some parts that, of course, are not national, but most of the satellite has uh, Brazilian technology. And now with Cibers uh, 4, Cibers 4A and Amazonia 1, Brazil is one of the few countries in the world that have a constellation of satellites with the same sensor that can monitor uh, its territory. And of course, uh, uh, the greatest thing of these instruments is to produce the images. So here I bring some of the examples. And uh, every, every time I show it, uh, people uh, may be surprised because we, we don't know that uh, Brazil has such great uh, uh, images uh, from our, our uh, territory. It, this, this image has two meters resolution a spatial resolution from Cibers 4A. Uh, and uh, Brazil is probably the, the country that offers globally uh, the image with the best spatial resolution uh, for free, uh, free of charge. So this is an example from Angra dos Reis. You can see all the details of the towns and the, the, the boats in the sea, roads, etc., that have applications for uh, several uh, management actions for urban management, environmental management, uh, uh, disaster risk, risk management. Uh, so uh, they are really uh, very important. Here is another example of uh, Cibers uh, 4 now, uh, is a panchromatic camera with a, a five meters a spatial resolution, and uh, I think you are in Rio de Janeiro uh, uh, in the in the conference. And uh, here is a, is a image from Maracanã. You can see very clearly here the staging. Uh, so uh, I think uh, we we are well placed with the, the instruments uh, to provide uh, important data for all sorts of application. And uh, as I said, Brazil has this constellation with satellites with the same, uh, uh, with uh, sensors with similar spatial resolution. This is now from Amazonia. Uh, this is a, a, a sensor with 20 meters uh, spatial resolution showing uh, the mining fields, illegal mining fields uh, in, the, in the Amazon. So the federal po policy uh, and uh, any, any, any institution that do the law enforcement is able to access these images for their planning of the actions, for example. Uh, here uh, from WFI, which is the sensor that we, we use for the deforestation alerts with 60 meters spatial resolution. This one is on board of Cibers 4, Cibers 4A, and Amazonia 1. And uh, in this example here, we can see uh, an area that is burning with the smoking uh, going up and uh, small, town, uh, uh, small towns in, 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 in the Amazon. 
And here another example, uh, this is uh, one of the first images from Amazonia One satellite. So we are already producing the, these images. Uh, this is the San Francisco River. And uh, we've, uh, we can see our agriculture on, on, on the banks of the, the San Francisco River with the irrigation pivot here and also demonstrating the capacity of these satellites to produce uh, important data uh, to support uh, uh, productive sectors that generate a lot of, uh, of uh, income uh, to the country through uh, exports. Uh, in fact, uh, uh, our agriculture uh, and our agribusiness uh, generates about uh, 100 billion dollars uh, a year. So it's a very important sector. But to support all these activities, we really need uh, to have a strategy related to the development of science, technology to produce innovation. Because we know that uh, the, geopo the geopolitics and the world is, is organized uh, is changing their organization and their priorities, mainly because climate change and because population growth and uh, to, to be able uh, to support uh, food security, water security, energy security. So we need to change our, our development pathways to be able to support the growth population in the world that will jump from 8 billion nowadays to 11 billion in the end of the century with temperatures uh, rising uh, at least two degrees by the end of the century. So we need to build this, this uh, strategic plan that uh, goes beyond governments to uh, be able to support uh, the sustainable development of the country. And this requires the systematic monitoring of the, the country. And as I said, because of the massive area, we need to, to, to have satellites. This is a, a, a prioritary uh, instrument that we need to have to be able to uh, uh, develop any plans that we, we, we think about for our, our country. We need to have computer technologies because these images, they are nothing if we don't have well-developed uh, well developed computer uh, technologies and innovation to process this data and make this data available and disseminate this data. And then we need to have uh, uh, a very well developed in terms of science to be able to integrate this big data set that uh, uh, remote sensing is providing nowadays to do the diagnosis of current situation and also predictions of future situation in order to support uh, policy decisions. And having this data, we also need to have this, all these model, models framework to be able to equilibrate the, 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 three, the three main pillars of uh, sustainable development, that is the economy, the society, and the environment. They need to play their roles together and, and balanced in a way that you don't uh, finish with any of these and you can maintain an equilibrium between them. And what is important is that this model is adopted by the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, uh, uh, the OECD, which Brazil uh, wants to, to make part of it and has all the, the resources to do it if we have a, a plan and if we use our technology and our human resource to really uh, provide the information needed for uh, the territorial uh, planning, planning and management. And with all these uh, technology and scientific bases, we are then uh, really able to leverage the development of the nation with data information analysis and all the, 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 the knowledge to inform society and subsidize uh, policies. Okay, and uh, of course, uh, we need to follow, and I put here uh, the icons of the, the sustainable development goals, because the whole world is organized uh, following these, these main 
uh, the, the, these main directions related to the sustainable development goals. But to have this uh, field sustainable, we really to need to develop the space sector. So there is a logic for a, su a successful space program. We need to have, we cannot only build satellites, we need to have the whole infrastructure and the whole, and the whole sequence of, of activities in place to really support a, a, a public and a private sector that operates uh, using uh, these, these, uh, all these products. And uh, I show here uh, some conceptual uh, mind map of what I see as, as the ideal. So first, we need to have the capacity building in remote sensing, uh, uh, post-grad course, have it in the university because uh, the capacity building is what will generate, uh, create the human resource to, to really, really work in the field. Uh, uh, will be people that will produce the data, but also will be the ones that are able to inform the society or even be uh, run any type of private sector that will consume the data. And by have this structure, you also have uh, the payment of taxes. And with the taxes, we, we, you can then uh, uh, concatenate a, a plan to have the public investments uh, to develop uh, the, 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 the space sector. So what we have is that the production of satellites costs a lot and costs for the state. This is an investment that must be done by the state. And as you go down uh, here, the, the routes, you have the, 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 the satellite, the satellite will, will uh, collect the data. You are going to receive this data in a ground station and this ground station will have uh, will be connected to hold the image uh, processing and image generation system that will then uh, uh, deliver it to the for, for the application. So the, the public investment can be reduced in this, in this way because the applications can have a lot of resource from the private sector. So you equilibrate this, we invest more in, in the production of satellites and less uh, in the in the in the applications and the private sector invests less in the production of uh, of the of the satellites and and more in the in the application and all of these in this side here if you if you can do it successfully you are going to generate tax and investments of the private sector that can support the public sector to maintain this uh, this structure and one thing that is really uh, 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 critical is that the society understand, understands that uh, using public investment for producing special artifacts, uh, satellites, the society as a whole will, will gain and will be able uh, to, to develop uh, quicker and with um, much better planning. And we know that uh, nowadays, there are several satellites flying, not only from Brazil, but, but from, the, from, from different countries. So there are more, there are about 2,000 active satellites in orbit, representing uh, a bit less than 40% of all satellites that are in orbiting. So 60% of, of uh, the satellites that are in orbit, they are not operational. So we have another field of uh, knowledge that needs to be developed, is being developed, is uh, uh, to treat the, the spatial garbage that we are also, uh, we, we, we don't produce garbage on, only in our planet, we are also producing garbage uh, 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 in, the, in the space. And here is just uh, 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 information about the number of satellites that uh, are launched every year. And we see an increase of the launch of satellites after 2010, because of this uh, launch of small satellites, nano satellites, CubeSat, etc., and and about 700 satellites are doing Earth observation, looking to our planet and providing data for us to use it in a, in, a, in the best way we can. So INPI uh, develops uh, uh, methodologies 
uh, to, to support this, this uh, field in Brazil. So uh, we build satellites with these satellites we, we have uh, and we build the satellites and we also receive different satellites from, from other countries. We have the monitoring system to, 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 to support public policies and also the geotechnologies, which are software to, to, to analyze the data. So one of the main uh, issues that uh, in Petrits is deforestation because it's a big it's a big uh, issue nowadays with sustainable development with payments for for reducing uh, deforestation that the country can get uh, to support sustainable activities. So we really need to uh, act on this. Uh, this is just showing what we see in the satellite an image from Google Earth, and then uh, what we see uh, in the field is very clear what the satellites see and what we, we see in the field. Uh, here also using Google Earth because uh, uh, I think it's one of the best tools uh, to, to show uh, remote sensing information to the society. We see that the, the, the advance of uh, deforestation in the country. Uh, here in Mato Grosso, near Xingu. And uh, INPE, uh, I, I was unable to translate it because uh, Brazil in the 60s had this, this uh, uh, sentence, this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, phrase from, from a, a president of, uh, old president of Brazil, integrar para não entregar. Né? It's like to integrate, uh, to not uh, give away uh, the Amazon. And uh, uh, based on that, uh, uh, these uh, governments in the 60s and 70s produce, pro provide, induce the colonization of the Amazon. And INPE, in the beginning, didn't act uh, to monitor deforestation to see what is being deforested illegally, but actually to look at the, at the, the, the images and see if people that was uh, uh, that had sub, uh, uh, that 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 was that were uh, induced to go to the Amazon were really using the land. So the, the the idea in that moment was to see that the area was the forest, uh, informing uh, that uh, people that was there uh, was using the land. So very interesting. Now we change completely the way we need to manage it. Uh, so and this uh, uh, start to be done uh, uh, using the, the produce project. So we measure deforestation since 88. So it's an example. We have a mask of deforestation in the beginning of the process. And then we, we look uh, outside this mask, what was deforested in this time uh, uh, zero, uh, uh, this time one. And then what is in red here that was the force in that year is incorporate in the blue mask. And then we get this blue mask in T2. We put this over the image again and look what was the force and then uh, and so on. And we, and we have it for, for the Amazon and since 2000 for, for the Cerrado with 30 meters spatial resolution. The DP project. Uh, is another project that delivers the alert. So we have daily information from, from uh, uh, mainly from, from the Brazilian satellites with 60 meters spatial resolution. And we look what is being, uh, what is occurring with this place. And we uh, send these alerts to, to all the, all the, all the institutions that uh, act on, on, on deforestation. And we can compare it with PRODIS, that is the annual data that we deliver, is the official deforestation rate data from Brazil. Uh, we are also using sat uh, radar data of Sentinel satellite, Sentinel-1, to, to look at the def uh, deforestation uh, in the DETER uh, uh, project uh, to overcome the problem of clouds. Uh, we have uh, also a platform that is open access for the whole so society to, to see uh, the data, the maps, and also uh, the analysis of this data. This is pro this data from, from, from the beginning of the monitoring till uh, last year. We don't have yet the, the data this year. 
uh, with analysis uh, about the protected areas, the states, and, and several different uh, uh, types of information that can be used by, by the society to evaluate how the country is doing in terms of reducing deforestation, for example. The donors that are supporting programs to reduce deforestation, this is an example of the alerts from the TER. So we have uh, the daily alerts, we have the monthly alerts, which is the ex example here, by state, by type of degradation, by year. And uh, if you play here, you can put in the internet the name Prodis or the Terra Imp or Terra Brasilis, which is the name of the platform, and you're going to see all these resources. We monitor fires as well. So this is the program uh, Queimadas. So we have the, the fires that are burning, the burnt area and the fire risk to support several initiatives. Uh, an example of the platform, which is also open in 2004, MP decided to open all, all their data uh, for the society and for the whole world. So we distribute this data uh, freely. Uh, so this is uh, information on, on, on active fires, all these points in the, in the map, and also the probability of, uh, of fire that we generate and is in the map on the background. And uh, 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 to finalize, I will give very quick event, uh, uh, examples here. We are using a new technology. This is the light, light detect detection in range. It gives you information on, on, the, on the topography. So it measures the height of the surface and you are able uh, to build 3D uh, information on, on, the, on the objects on, uh, at the, the, the land surface. So you can build uh, the canopy top and the ground and you can estimate the height of the objects and we are using it for carbon accounts. So we have uh, several flights over the Amazon. We, MP is not using satellites yet. This is a, a airborne LIDAR, but there is, NASA has now a LIDAR that is uh, placed in the International uh, Space Station that is also collect similar data. We are using this data uh, to quantify the amount of carbon uh, in forest and, and connect it with the deforestation data to estimate uh, carbon emissions. This is an example of emissions from degradation. This is an example of how much carbon we assimilate uh, from uh, secondary forests, the forests that are growing in areas that were uh, deforested. Using very high resolution data, we also uh, have techniques to support uh, and reduce cost of, of a forest operation and certificate these operations and see if they are in conformity of the law with the law. So these are uh, areas of uh, uh, legal logging and we can see the extraction of the woods and we can check this, uh, this uh, uh, information from the satellite with what is planned uh, uh, for the, from the, uh, what is planned for, from the agency that is exploring that area and check if it's in agreement. So I think all this technology support the development of the country and INPI has a role in, in, in build capacity of people that are experts on, on, on this type of, uh, of uh, processing. And also artificial intelligence to look at uh, uh, specific targets. Here's the, the example is uh, uh, palm trees like acai, which is an a, a important product for, for the bioeconomy. Uh, but you can use also these techniques for human uh, planning, etc. So, uh, MP also with this knowledge, we work uh, with, uh, we are part of the international chart of uh, space and major disasters. So is the disaster chart. We support uh, actions across the globe when a disaster occur and MP is now leading these actions. Uh, so it's leading the whole international group uh, for this six months period. Uh, advanced uh, SAR data to, to look at the formations uh, before of the Brumadinho done uh, collapse. So this is a work from, from Paradela and, and, and Gama. Uh, they are from INP demonstrating the capacity of, uh, of, uh, of, uh, of a Sentinel satellites uh, to, to detect this, this uh, displacement of the terrain. Uh, we also uh, do a lot of uh, work on agriculture, modeling agriculture, uh, looking at the, the development of the cultures and, and, and the climate. 
And ocean uh, also is another big field, modeling currents, uh, uh, fish resource, and, and, and uh, water quality, etc. So I think uh, we follow up these. I can, I can uh, uh, just say that uh, uh, INPI uh, has really start, started the, the process of forming specialists in remote sensing in Brazil. And now uh, uh, we hope as an institution that these specialists across Brazil and across uh, the whole world can, can provide their knowledge and their abilities, their technical abilities to inform the society and form more people in a way that we can better manage, manage our, our natural resource and our uh, territory for, for a sustainable future of the, of the future generations. Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Aragão. It, it is. Thank you, Dr. Aragão. It was really nice talk to see all this history about INPI. And um, it's a pleasure to have you representing uh, INPI here today. And uh, you talked about, I really liked your slide about the pyramid with the investments and what you can produce. And what we see today is that uh, all the Brazilian institutions like INPI, um, Geological Service of Brazil, uh, ANP, all providing free data for the society. And in the first uh, course, we, the second course we have in, on the 19th, the um, Australian lecture said that we have a really nice uh, uh, data source for everything we do, like from INPI. And, he, and I can remember 20 years ago, 30 years ago, we didn't have that. So, so we, we've, we've gone very further with providing data for the society, for the uh, universities to do their research. And then, saying all that, what you can tell me about the cut of investments and what this can cause in the short term and long term for Brazil and for these important institutions who is being affected for this, by this. <laughs> Yeah, uh, the, the, the cuts in science and technology are very worrying because uh, there is no country that achieves full development without science. And uh, uh, in my opinion, uh, Brazilian society might not be uh, entirely informed about the need to have strong science and technology in a country. So I think in part, we need to uh, do more uh, to inform the society, the, po the, the politicians, uh, to be able to uh, really uh, uh, know the, 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 the importance of science and technology. Uh, Brazil has, uh, uh, as, as you said, uh, gave a, a very important step forward uh, by opening all their data. It's not only remote sensing data, all this is spatial information that we have from IBGE, our geological survey, INPI. But also if you, we look at the, 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 the SUS data, the health uh, system data is also open. So uh, we are in a, in, a, in a very good position because with this data open, we can uh, provide uh, and in better inform the society about uh, the relationship of different processes and the academy have the access to produce uh, research uh, based on this and improve all this process through time. So uh, uh, really, we... we uh, forward in terms of uh, uh, making the data available, and uh, we are, we are, we have not been able really to give the 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 special the, the 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 special attention to science and technology in the country. We never reached uh, 
uh, this uh, 2% uh, gross uh, GDP investment in science and technology. So I think uh, the country really needs to, to rethink uh, the science and technology for, 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 for the future, because also we will need much more uh, innovation for the transition from the current development model that we have to the sustainable development model that we, we must have in a very short term. Thank you. I have a question for you from YouTube. Uh, uh, YouTube, uh, who is watching your talk. Luis, great presentation about data generated from satellites in stores, on premises or keep on cloud. We imagine a huge amount of data generating a daily basis. There is data open to the public free of charge. Excellent question, uh, Carlos. And, uh, and uh, so INPI, uh, since 2004, INPI starts to open all, all the data produced in, in, in the institution, especially the, the images. And uh, this was uh, uh, followed, by, followed by other countries. Uh, for example, the US start to make their, their Landsat data also freely available. Uh, and data with, uh, uh, let's say, a uh, uh, high spatial resolution at 30 meters. Uh, because before US uh, in, in the early 2000s starts to make available MODIS data with uh, 250 meters spatial resolution. And why they did that? Because as the, the, the satellite generate such a huge amount of data, you are unable to process of all of these and develop products if you don't have the support of the academic and uh, the academics and the whole society to, to work on this data and improve the products that can be uh, delivered from, from this. So uh, having said that, so INP uh, now, nowadays store all this data, uh, not only data from Brazilian satellites, but we also we still receive uh, Landsat data uh, from, from the Americans. And Brazil is now uh, uh, also uh, installing the, the, the Sentinel hub. Brazil will be the hub of distribution of images from the Sentinel mission, which is from uh, the European uh, Union, the European Space, Space Agency. So we, we, we are not working yet with uh, clouds, uh, but we, we have our, our, our infrastructure that, uh, that allows to store all this data and this data is open to the society. We have, uh, we have uh, uh, if you go to our website, you have our catalog where you can access these images. Uh, some of the images that you might want is not there, but you can uh, contact us and, and, and we will make this available. But of course, uh, as I said, because of this large, uh, big data set, we need to improve our technology, our science, to be able to better provide these services to, to the users. And this pass through uh, uh, the investments uh, in science and, and, and technology. So the data are free. INP has the, the data from, from their uh, satellites and is free of charge for the, for the public. Thank you very, very much for the great talk, for taking the time to be with us today. And uh, so we will have a very nice, I hope I'm very excited to uh, watch the round table about Amazonia one uh, this if afternoon today. And so thank you very much. That's all I can say to you, Luiz. Muito obrigada. <laughs> Thank you very much. Muito obrigado. I hope you have a, a, a really this great uh, debate about Amazonia One. I think we need really to 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 make our, our our space program stronger to be able to keep producing uh, the the satellites and, and the data that will uh, lead us to 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 uh, uh, better development than we we, we have now. 
And uh, we, are, we are open uh, to the whole society to provide data information, anything people, people need. And also our postgraduate course for receiving students, our uh, uh, Brazilian symposium to receive all professionals of the area. And uh, so thank you very much for this opportunity. And uh, we are always open uh, to debate and, and, and to exchange uh, information with the community. Thank you very much. Thank you. Petrobras acredita em toda a tecnologia que aponte para um futuro melhor. Robôs que chegam em lugares impossíveis, a Petrobras tem. Supercomputadores e inteligência artificial com respostas instantâneas, também usamos. Realidade virtual para aumentar a eficiência, tudo isso está na Petrobras. Porque assim, com tanta inovação,